Hello and welcome to a new episode of The Other Russian. I'm still doing this shit. Yeah, and finally I've identified a topic that I'm going to talk to you about a lot and the topic is psychedelics. So, again, I will continue doing this and probably in this episode you'll hear something interesting along the lines of what psychedelics are, what type of psychedelics are there and a lot of other stuff that would be related and unrelated <laughs> unfortunately but yeah um i will be focusing mainly on the russian speaking audience because i've understood that unfortunately my uh, countrymen or however it's called like people with whom i share my nationality based on my birth place basically uh, Russians, <laughs> namely, so they don't know shit about psychedelics. Uh, well, of course, some of them do. I'm not, you know, trying to kind of put them all together under one uh, page or however. Ah, shit, my English today is quite shitty, but I'm still gonna continue anyway because I understood that this genre is probably something that I'm, I'll be experimenting with and trying to identify something interesting here to help me to structure my thoughts when I'll be recording in Russian. So yeah, again, psychedelics. Why all of a sudden I'm gonna talk to you about psychedelics? Actually, I talked to you before about them, but I'm not sure if I said this before, but I went through the UC Berkeley's program called Psychedelics in the Mind and I got certified. Which means that I can officially talk about psychedelics and say that I'm a certified professional. Uh, it is kind of legitimization of my interest. And today I have uh, filed an application for the Exeter um, University in London. Or uh, I don't know, what, what's it called? I, anyway, it's called Exeter, but <laughs> the rest I don't remember. So yeah, the program is called similarly psychedelics, mind and medicine and whatever. So I got a dog here and uh, the dog brought me a dinosaur, which I need to throw so that she brings it back <laughs> and then tries to take it from me. But yeah, so um, psychedelics, right. Um, the reason I want to talk more about this topic is that it is very close to me, it resonates with me strongly, and I've known psychedelics for like 20 years or so, and I started using, ooh, I don't even remember what was the first one that I tried, probably ecstasy, which is mainly MDMA, well, and typically it's mixed with speed or something like that. But yeah, it's hard to recollect like exact moment when I first tried other substances like LSD, for instance, or salvinorine, or uh, what's it called? Salvia divinorum, um, the botanical name. Uh, weed, apparently, is psychedelic. And yeah, so uh, it's like, I think with weed it was roughly, yeah, 20 years ago or so. But yeah, anyway, it, it's not about my first experience, it's about psychedelics per se. So what are psychedelics? And I'm gonna talk to you a lot about them, but there is one other term that I'm going to be using. It's called entheogens. So what are the entheogens? Yeah, let's step back and start with psychedelics. So it starts with a generation of two words, psyche and delos. So psyche is, well, basically, uh, damn, it's uh, it's easier to explain it in Russian than it says, because when you say psyche, they're like, oh, what the fuck is this? But in English, it's like completely different metaverse of comprehension when you say a uh, word psyche. So people by default should know what the fuck psyche is. So yeah, I mean, basically it's whatever makes you, you, right? I mean, in a nutshell. And Delos is something along the line of manifesting, so basically is manifestation of the mind or psyche, or however you call it. But the problem with that word is that it's been overused for many years, and it's got a very weird connotation to it. So people think that it's something bad or something prohibited, and there's this kind of 
spirit of the hippies and people uh, you know who are trying to kind of break the system stop wars yeah talking about war uh, a week ago new wars started so um yeah be between uh palestine and uh, israel but yeah it's gonna be a shit show over the coming days so it seems that the world is um, kind of melting down slowly but hey there are people who say that you know if you give psychedelics to world leaders probably there isn't going to be any war and i tend to agree with that however it's not like just giving it to them it is giving it to them in a certain set and setting and i'm gonna talk to you about set and setting later on but yeah let's first go back to the psychedelics so the word itself was describing a way substances influence mind and it was first nailed by um, British psychiatrist Humphrey Osmond I'm recollecting it from my mind I did some notes but I didn't prepare for this one as usually so yeah and uh, Aldous Huxley and Aldous Huxley is known for writing a dystopia called uh, Brave New World if I remember correctly and the genre itself is very close to me, to my heart. And, well, probably one of the reasons is that I originally come from a police state. And police state is pretty, pretty much as if you're living in a dystopian world. So, yeah, and the first dystopia that I've heard, probably I mentioned to you before, it's Zamyatin's Me, uh, Us, translated. It was written in the beginning of 20th century by Russian... Um, writer uh, Evgeny Zamyatin and I read it in like 10th grade uh, when I was studying at school along other alongside of other what, what, what's the word like renowned writers like Dostoevsky and uh, Bulgakov and others so when I read it I was like oh this fucking book is interesting this genre is interesting and a friend of a friend of mine had a I, I think I mentioned it to him one one time and he said he got a, a book, a compilation of like three dystopias. So it was Zamyatin Me, Aldous Huxley, Brave New World, and George Orwell's 1984. So I borrowed it from him, read it, all the rest, two out of three, because I read the first one originally, although it was in the middle somehow. But yeah, in my view, Zamyatin still was the founder of the genre, per se. But yeah, fuck it. It doesn't matter who found it. it, it what matters is, is that... You know there are others who contributed to it and it created a certain direction of literature with which is dystopia explains gives you an understanding of what oh kind of living in a police state is like so by the way if you've read george orwell's 1984 so in a sense it is what it's like to live in um i guess north korea and pretty much russia nowadays now we're <laughs> now yeah nowadays but yeah, going back to um, the genre and the, uh, the topic that I've uh, decided to start with psychedelics. So going back to Humphrey Osman and Aldous Huxley email exchange. Well, email not actually email. It's mail exchange. Uh, electronic messages didn't exist back in the day. And it was in mid 50s or something. Damn, I need to do the proper preparation. Well, yeah, as I said, it's more of a improv here, so I'm going to prepare for the Russian episode there. anyway. But so they've described to each other the qualities of the substances, and actually they've been discussing a, a specific cacti called peyote. So sacred cacti, uh, San Pedro cacti, if I remember correctly, like properly botanical name, but again, it may be a bit fluent here not fluent but uh, not that firm because yeah still i got the certification i read I went through the program in like three days and it was supposed to run until like february next year but i was like fuck this is so exciting i'm gonna finish it so i did uh, but of course the, the knowledge is that that kind of calcified as they say in the professional world so Starting with, yeah, again, quick step back uh, about the program in general. So once I finished it, I started to gather more information, Google stuff, 
I created a separate Twitter account and subscribed to people in the field of psychedelics because I wanted to know, like, first of all, what the fuck is happening there? Like, what are the new uh, research? What's the new information there that is available to the public that can be used and, you know, read through since the topic is no longer a stigma or a taboo. Oh, by the way, talking about it, I put psychedelics in LinkedIn on the description of my profile. It's like, this is very weird because, you know, it's 2023 and like even two years ago, I, I couldn't have even imagined to for something like this to happen because th this is just insane to talk about it out there in the public openly without having the fear to be prosecuted. But again, probably it's my police state in the back of my head talking because in Russia, I still, still nowadays, still, you can get like three years in jail for half a gram of weed. Half a gram of weed is just, you know, half a bud, medium-sized bud. And yeah, I mean, three years just for consuming it and not even, you know, selling it for personal use. And this is just weird. And I mentioned in one of the previous episodes, I'm going to try and kind of incorporate it somewhere here about the book that I uh, read. It's called uh, The Emperor Wears No Clothes. So in that book, it's like a very detailed and nuanced compilation of the facts that's gathered throughout the entire human history about marijuana, aka cannabis, Mary Jane, um, however you call it, like weed in the majority of cases or whatever, kind of uh, repeating myself. But yeah, again, so by the way, weed is a psychedelic as well. So it's mind manifesting in the sense. Yeah, remember the, the thing that I started with, hope, well, I still do some, <laughs> remember some. So I started to dig into the numbers, not numbers, but like uh, studies and papers, scientific experiments and shit like that. And I got like dragged away because the amount of knowledge is fucking insane out there available. You can go through it, read it. And I'm, I've started a compilation of the materials that I've gathered so far in a Miro board in Miro. I typically pronounce it Miro because um, when you say in Russian, на карте мира, which is nice phrase because it shows it, it, it says the map of the world, but then again there is this word in Russian which means world and peace, and it's called мир. Funny thing, unfortunately, well it's not funny, but uh, creepy funny. I mean, I like dark sense of humor, so I may occasionally throw some offensive jokes here and there but yeah i mean go to the comments and tell me what you think about those jokes so yeah uh funny thing is that if you nowadays try to call for peace in soviet well <laughs> russia uh, you'll you can well first of all you get jailed just you know sent not sentenced but detained yeah and then you'll probably spend the night at the uh or like preliminary place where they hold you before they send you to court or something like that depending on the situation depending on who you are depending on where it happened you could face like five years in jail easily or you know they can leave you be but they will fine you with something like 700 euro or well nowadays more or less you know, dollars and then tell you to never do that shit again and then you'll be under scope. They're going to be looking at you closely. And, well, the dog brought me a, a new toy, a deer. <laughs> there we go, deer. Um, so, yeah. Oh, what the fuck was that? The damn dog um, got distracted. So, yeah, you can uh, get some jail time for saying peace. But once you go back to what I was originally talking to you about the psychedelics and everything uh, probably you'll start to ask some questions and by the way if you have questions throw them up there in the, in the comment section I'm gonna be throwing that shit to my dog at because she insists to, to play and you know it's a sunny day I'm working from home I did an episode on remote work and yeah my dog is here with me. We recently moved to a new apartment because our old landlord, very different direction, but still. So there is this very strange case. So my landlord uh, asked us to move to vacate the premises because 
they, he and his wife and the child, uh, they've sold their house and, uh, uh, well, yeah, it's very complicated because they had an apartment and a house, they sold a house, but then they decided to sell an apartment and uh, buy a, a something better, whatever. So they sold the apartment in the same building in which we've been living before, and then they had nowhere to live, right? And they asked us to vacate the premises because they weren't able to find a new place. And the reason is that they've been protected by the law. So in Lithuania, if you're a family with a child and you rent a place, they cannot tell you to leave the premises, right? So they're kind of protecting you because you have a child and, you know, it's not good to do something like that to people with children. The funny thing is that nobody is willing to give them place for rent. And the reason is that they have a child. So this is like the idiot system of the world we live in today. And I'm not talking about like specific, well, actually I'm talking about specific law, but I'm not trying to generalize here. But this is what happens when people, populist type of political figures try to implement laws that should work in the favor of public, but actually just fuck it all up. So they couldn't find a place to live because nobody wanted to rent it to them because they have a child, even though they were, they were kind of protected by the law. But yeah, law works against them, not for them. Well, this is the world we live in, right? And there are many laws like that, especially in Russia. But yeah, fuck Russia. <laughs> I mean, lovely country, major p human potential, unfortunately, stupid people who are ruling it currently and destroying their human potential and killing people, basically. But yeah, anyway, um, psychedelics, right? So I was talking about the Humphrey Osman and the, uh, Aldous Huxley, the, their exchange where they, you know, nailed the term psychedelic. But then it got popularized due to many reasons, and there are several things related to it. So I've recently started a Telegram channel in Russian because I, again, understood that people don't know shit at all and the knowledge is limited. So I started to find some interesting information. And actually, in this particular podcast, I will be talking mainly about the research findings the information that I was out there available because I understand the value that the substance holds in terms of like healing trauma, healing PTSD. And yeah, talking about psychedelics, let me just quickly try and list them all from the back of my memory. So LSD, psilocybin, that is in uh, psilocybin mushrooms or magic mushrooms, how are they called? Um, Peyote, uh, San, Pedro, San Pedro Cacti, if I again remember correctly. Ayahuasca, which is a combination of several weeds, well, not weeds, plants, basically, but I'm going to talk about it at some point in time. Then there are more, again, natural one, the bogain or bogain, I guess, probably. The pronunciation is some type of plant from African continent at some point in time. Probably I'm going to cover it. Weeds, cannabis... And yeah, I mean, cannabis is widely known, so I'm not going to go into details there. Other more chemical uh, type of nature substances like MDMA, methoxydimethyltryptamine, if I... Well, no, it's DMT, dimethyltryptamine, MDMA, methoxymethamphetamine, whatever, I don't fucking remember it, but probably next time I'm gonna try and nail it or put it here in the description somewhere here, or maybe underneath, but anyway, what what else? So, yeah, DMT, dimethyltryptamine, 5-MeO-DMT, it's another variation of it. What else, dog? Do you remember shit? No, you don't remember shit. Um, damn, trying to recollect what else was there, but yeah, probably that's gonna be the main list, so I'm gonna be talking about those runs. So, again, it takes time to cover it all. So let's try to kind of remember what psychedelics are and what they aren't. So they're mind manifesting, meaning they, they kind of allow psyche to work in a completely different manner. And the beauty of the psychedelic topic is that it's multidisciplinary. So you got biology, you got neurophysics, you got chemistry, you got 
psychology, you got philosophy, you got theology. I think those are the main ones, give or take. So the psychedelics combine all of those topics and they are located at the very intersection of each and every one of them. So there are different, there's different type of knowledge that is required to understand more about, oh, forgot about one that I've experimented with uh, lately. It's called ketamine. Ketamine is insane thing in terms of the way it works. It works like dissociative. I hope I've pronounced it correctly, but it, at the same time, it is something that is derived from a, uh, no, it's MDMA from PCP, but ketamine is basically, it's something that, that use, they use to put you down when you have an operation. So yeah, talk about operation and, and the mind. So originally the, the substances were used by people to understand more. And you need to understand one other thing about psychedelics is that humans and psychedelics, or the term that I prefer to use in theogens, I'm gonna talk to you about it. So the relationship between them has been very intertwined throughout like 5,000 years or so. So the history is there. There is even a theory about a so-called stoned ape how does it work? So for people who understand like general knowledge and probably heard of Darwin's theory of evolution. So if you know all this, you probably know that we all came from Africa. I mean, we all as human beings, like one species, right? And somewhere along the road, we've evolved basically from apes or predecessors. So the stone ape theory is that human brain got, uh, well, got developed, it evolved because apes were eating mushrooms. So they were, they were like going through the savanna and, or some other parts of Africa heading somewhere. And if you've been in those areas, I haven't. <laughs> So I probably can just guess and be this fucking stereotypical person. Although African continent has, if I remember correctly, like 56 countries, different countries, separate ones. So it's fucking huge. And yeah, so our predecessors were going through the deserts and, you know, trying to not die along the way, probably just picking something, whatever was growing trying to escape from, you know, lions or lion or whoever was populating those areas back in the day, maybe cyber tooth, no, probably not cyber tooth tigers, but anyway, fuck it. So they've been walking and gathering and eating something that they've been finding along the way. And they've been eating mushrooms, but why mushrooms? Well, magic mushrooms or psychedelic mushrooms is because they grow very neatly on top of uh, animal shit. Yeah, you've heard that right, shit. So imagine a cow and elephant, they take a dump and there's a huge pile of shit. So there, magic, magic mushrooms grow. So you can say, oh, those junkies, they eat mushrooms from shit. But yeah, that, not the point. You can grow mushrooms in your daily life. You can order a set. If you're in the EU, you can order a set. It's 100% legal. There are stores. If they're interested, they can discuss terms of advertisement here. But yeah, in US as well. So you can order and it's not like illegal because the spores are not prohibited. The mushrooms are, spores are not. And actually it's very insane to think is that Plants are fucking prohibited. Like this is this is mother nature we're talking about here. So mother nature is prohibited. Like, wow, right? But yeah. Uh, anyway, going back to the stone ape theory. So our predecessors were eating those magic mushrooms, and their neocortex, the kind of developed part of the brain that we all have possess, is that it developed this um, kind of 
new connections basically the levels of interconnectedness because the thing about psychedelics is that they activate the entire brain and starts to operate in a non-standard manner so in your daily life your brain is not like 100 percent active in terms of at the same time it is active, of course, throughout the day, throughout different scenarios. There is amygdala, the lizard brain underneath. There is neocortex that has this more of a, a thinking capacity and the ability to, you know, process stuff and imagine stuff. And this is something that separates us humans from animals is that we have imagination, right? So we've imagined, I don't know, alphabet, buildings, laws, uh, whatever it's part of our imagination by the way great book is homo sapiens but or no it's just it's called sapiens by fuck i don't remember who wrote it but yeah anyway fuck it anyway just google sapiens you'll find it so our predecessors brains evolved because they were eating mushrooms and the reason that i talk about this theory of course you cannot prove it at all it's not possible there is no archaeological data that you know dates back to i don't know what is it like 1.7 million or how however how however many exact years there is or 2.7 million years ago roughly so, you know, it's not possible to find any evidence, but you definitely know that you can find psilocybin mushrooms, well, in some parts of uh, our planet, of course, or that they would be growing on top of the animal shit. By the way, elephant farms in Thailand, yeah, it's a place of interest, you know, for those of you who uh, may try to find something somewhere, but of course, it's all fucking Ill illegal in the majority of countries and the jurisdictions, but... It, it still doesn't limit people from, you know, experimenting with their mind and psyche. And the strange thing about psychedelics is that they break those barriers. They lead to a phenomenon called ego dissolution. What the fuck is ego dissolution? Or ego death, right? So what the fuck is ego death? And ego death is something that is happening when you are experiencing a high dose of a different psychedelic. Probably even weed, yeah, here as well. I mean, the, the amount of weed that should be consumed is probably insane, but you'll get there at some point in time eventually. So what does it mean, right? It means that the barriers, the defense mechanisms, the things that are built there in your psyche, they are there working on a daily basis, protecting you from something, you know, uh, helping you, guiding you nav to navigate through the system of the imaginary world of you know the constructs concepts various concepts and constructs yeah probably of you know our interaction our life basically right so they are there to help you of course but when you're experiencing ego death it is something that is hard to explain easily however since I told you there's like shitload of data and this is something that you could definitely do just by yourself if you want to learn more and the knowledge is out there. It is available for anyone willing to just take a fucking extra mile and dig in. So there is a web portal called Erovid. I'm gonna spell it for you because I'm not gonna remember to put it in the notes. I just simply don't have time for that. But E R O W I D dot fucking don't remember net or whatever. Just Google, you'll find it. So the beauty of this web portal is like extremely outdated in terms of design, but you just need to accept it because it was built probably at the dawn of internet around that time and it has like shitload of data shitload of information and roughly 70,000 trip reports from people using different substances the least of those is like dozens of different substances the reason i know this is that i recently read a nice very interesting article about an mit engineer who decided to 
put AI to work and fed the data from the aerobid of people's trips basically and try to compile it all and identify like I don't know nuances something that is very typical for different psychedelics or entheogens I'm gonna get it back to it don't, don't worry and find a way to probably synthesize something new so insane I mean imagine AI going through all those trip reports of people writing along something along the lines of you know I've finally woken up and I'm you know I've understood that the life is something different like my consciousness face the ego death by the way get back to it I'll get back to it but yeah I mean imagine the AI algorithms like what the fuck would, would been happening with them analyzing all this data and maybe just one day you'll hear sound doo -doo 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 -doo. I hope I'm not gonna get sued for the Terminator here but still so EcoDev, right and the defense systems they just die they they're demolished all the barriers are demolished and all the personality is kind of demolished it is really hard to explain but if you've tried it you know what i'm talking about but be careful please there are like safety measures that i will be talking about in the next episode because this is like something critical here we're talking about when we're talking about psychedelics because you've probably heard of the stories of people who you know fell off 20th or whichever floor after you know some substance use or whatever yeah, I'm just checking if I'm still recording. I'm trying some new setup here. So, of course, shit like that happens from time to time. That's why it's important to, you know, put safety measures. And there are safety measures. Because, I mean, even recently I went through an online course on harm reduction in, term, in the context of psychedelics, of course. So I know what I'm talking about here again. Certified, right? So, EgoDev covered well partially probably worth an another additional explanation here so what the fuck it is so you are basically experiencing a death of you it sounds scary and it, it probably is if you're unprepared if you're facing it and then it happens to you like fuck i'm dying but you're not you're gonna be okay in the majority of cases so why this is located in the context of trauma and uh, healing potential of psychedelics is that when this happens when the ego dissolution happens people can touch with something inside of them their psyche something that is you know very deep rooted sitting somewhere there underneath in their subconsciousness and they can connect with it and be able to process some really hard shit so if somebody faced a trauma and we're talking about ptsd for instance because this is like major shit we're talking about here somebody died next to you maybe your relative maybe the, the war started again recently a new war emerged in this impossible mansion but yeah i mean imagine people living there and i have a friend uh well we're writing to each other exchanging messages but she's currently located in israel with her husband and cats and they're located in the north part and it's shitty of course for her i mean to experience that type of thing but the good thing is that however big trauma is like mental trauma we're talking about here right not, not like physical one it can be healed with the help of psychedelics now you can throw all type of tomatoes or tomatoes at me but it is still realistic because recently actually on my birthday maps uh it's multidisciplinary association of psychedelic studies american organization founded by rick dublin uh, got a confirmation of the successful pass of the third trial of um, use of MDMA assisted therapy in treatment of PTSD in the United States of America. 
insane right so in dma is helping right but other substances as well of course there are different protocols and the way you use it but still so again the concept here is that something traumatic happened to you like again somebody died next to you or a bomb exploded and it created an injury like mental injury at least well physical of course potentially you can even die of course because some fucking people decide to just kill other humans stupid i know but you know people are stupid and double-faced that's true but yeah it's just humans it's our nature unfortunately we're all the same and i can give you numerous types of examples uh, that would illustrate my thought but if you have questions about that just throw it in the comments i'll respond to them I promise so what i was talking is that it helps to touch with this traumatic experience with somebody that you know face this issue and they've been suffering ever since so psychedelics assisted therapy assisted therapy not by themselves of course there are people in reports saying that you know there is this self-healing capacity of our psyche to do the work with just psychedelics themselves but yeah i mean let's cover that topic in the next episode here right just bear with me in trying to navigate in this uh, level of uncertainty here that I'm talking about because I've done like zero preparation for this episode and I've been told like by many people that I need to prepare I need to structure it all I need to do this this I'm like fuck where do I have time so once I become like a fucking famous blogger I'm gonna revisit that podcast and probably structure it and do it better but for now it's just gonna be a fucking improv right however bad it is you just need to bear with me or don't need to but anyway so going back to the ego dissolution and the trauma is that when people are in psychedelics that there are no boundaries and you and mean as a personality as a human being as a consciousness as the mind you can touch with traumatic parts that are located in like deeper levels of your psyche and be able to process them, be able to live through them, be able to solve that pain and get rid of it and continue living your life. That sounds insane, right? But this is fucking reality, I promise you. I got a shitload of data that I can confirm with, but you can just Google at least what I'm saying and double check me at each and every fact, but as I'm operating the facts here, science, bitch. So, yeah, um, going back to the topic of psychedelics and, and theogens. One other thing it is important is that psychedelics, and if you've watched my episode on the climate change, you probably get the reference. So, in theogens is a climate change, whereas psychedelics is the global warming. So, by reshaping it, we are changing the narrative. And the narrative here is different because... You remember psychedelic well my manifesting by the way have you ever heard a phrase like oh you got a psychedelic shirt like what the fuck are you talking about man i mean my shirt doesn't have a psyche right stupid joke but anyway so going back to the entheogen so the entheogen is something extremely different in Theo, I don't remember the fucking translation. It's a combination again of some parts, but basically it's something related with Theo's like the divine, the touch of divine within or something like that. Yeah, nearby. Some divinity or there was this deity, right? Deity. I know some fancy words which I don't know uh, meaning of, but fuck it. I'm going to use them anyway. So D-I-E-T-Y is the word. Uh, so it's probably something about the, the divinity or whatever but anyway it is the touch of god and i'm atheist or agnostic probably more of because atheism is like not believing in anything whereas agnosticism is not like believing in the god per se but you know allowing or entertaining the thought that there is something there which we just cannot fucking explain and this is something that i'm leaning on towards and again as i said to you before i was born on the crossroad right between europe and asia and i recently get moved into a new apartment so uh been moving stuff here and there the the workers the kind of people who help me with my wife with the moving stuff movers i guess 
So the apartment door was open, it was a new apartment, they were bringing in stuff, boxes, and there's this lady from the next apartment. She looked at me and then, well, she started to speak Lithuanian, which means that I don't speak Lithuanian. I asked her if she speaks Russian, to which she responded something in Lithuanian. I was like, well, unfortunately, I don't know Lithuanian, and unfortunately, well, I didn't say it out loud, it's just, you don't have that time to, you know, learn the fucking language, or I'm lazy, or you can put me into many different packets, I don't give a shit, but the point here is that, you know, at some point in time, she started to speak Russian, I was like, oh, okay, that's interesting, so eight ladies, roughly, like, 70 years old or so, in my view, and she asked, uh, where are you from? I said, Russia, and she's like, I was like, hmm, that's interesting, right? So, yeah, no stereotypes, no judgment. Uh, I mean, yeah, right, so... But this is different. Uh, so, going back to the infiogen, is that the touch of the divinity within? How did I end up in this topic? Anyway, so... It, there is something to it. There is the spirituality concept that is pretty much comprehensible and understandable in the Eastern world. However, in the Western world, it is like entirely different. So I know what it is in a sense because I was born in the crossroad, right? Oh, well, finish that thought. So I'm gonna finish some of the thoughts along the way. Hopefully, that I'm gonna kill all those gestalts that I've created. Uh, anyway, um, going back to the infusion. So this is something more, you know, fancy and it's different. Because when you say infusions, people are like, what the fuck is infusion? Whereas when you say psychedelics, like, oh, fucking junkie. So the connotation is like extremely different. So I'm probably going to wrap up here. But again, just wanted to say hi to somebody who is still watching this. And say that I'm gonna be posting videos and editing however they go, I'm just gonna put it out there however shitty it is and just, you know, live it as it is. But we'll continue improvising and structure my thoughts so that I then am able to cover the topic properly in Russian, but probably you're gonna just suffer. Nobody's gonna suffer, I'm just gonna put it and nobody's gonna watch it. But in case you are, throw some crypto in there and yeah, thanks for watching and I got shit old things to do. So thank you very much for your time and hopefully you like the series in that direction. But yeah, we'll see. Thank you.